I often refer to how back in the 70s and 80s, we didn't have the same support that many of the athletes have now. And I think on reflection that I was talking more about the financial support than anything else, because without a doubt, there certainly wasn't as much money available for potential athletes to tap into. And we relied on things like Sports Aid Foundation grants, which were very minimal, but much appreciated. I mean, any help to finance our dreams was really, really appreciated. But it wasn't a wage. It was nowhere near. Uh, And at 16 years of age, when I went to London to train, um, because that's where all the top fighters in the UK were, either at the Renshaden or the Budokai, um, that's where most of the Olympic teams were training. And uh, so that was the place to go. And at 16, uh, mum mum and dad decided that uh, they were going to let me pursue my dream. And uh, so down I went. And it was certainly the place to go. And I remember my mum and dad dropping me off on the doorstep at 14 Edith Road and uh, just 16 years of age. That must have been a very, very difficult thing for them. Um, But thinking, you know, I I think about it that I was left alone. But uh, thinking back now, I wasn't really alone. I was in a judo house It was full of judoka and they were all willing to help me. And of course, I could always call my mum and dad who were always there for me and would have collected me at the drop of a hat if I'd have phoned them. And I think knowing that was a saving grace. Uh, But it was hard financially and I relied on small jobs and, and an incredibly kind landlord, dear Mike Gross, who became such a dear friend of mine, who sometimes let me off rent and sometimes he'd put things into my fridge. And um, yeah, he helped me so much and I'll never forget his help. He helped me survive the early days, you could say. Uh, But what I was realising was that due to family was wide and looked out for each other and of course we know that now we've got such we always talk about the judo family don't we and how incredible they are we can go anywhere all over the world and we can see somebody stay at their house we can eat with them and we know people everywhere and uh you know it's a a a big world and lots of judo friends out there Um, So anyway, the Budokai became my second home and they in kind took me under their wing and helped me on my way. They were always helping me at the Budokai. But it was my original judo club, Coventry, of course, with Brian Perriman at the helm, who was such an encouragement throughout my early days, juniors coming into seniors. And uh, they rallied together to send me to London and to help me financially to live there and train at the Budokai. And they never stopped believing in me. And I'll never forget that. And at a young age, looking back, you know, I realised that I was very self-centred. It was all about me. Uh, And I was uh, going to succeed no matter what. And I often, you know, I I get told that you have to be a little bit selfish in order to succeed. But at at this age, it was all about me, me, me. And uh, I didn't really take other people's thoughts and I didn't take them into consideration as much as I should have done. And uh, I think you fail to realise who helped you or who's helping you on the way. Uh, who had your back. And, um, well, it enabled me, of course, to find my direction. My my very first coach, who was my dad, was such an influence on my life and my career. And he guided me all the way through my junior days and he laid a solid foundation for what was to come. But I think uh, many of the early life lessons were from him and they're what I carry with me today, my philosophies of life, you could say. But um, in the end, of course, judo-wise, he knew that he needed to pass me on to others 
uh, with my dad, it was all about progression, not possession. And he passed uh, the mantle on to other coaches who he thought would take me further. You realised that I had another level to go to. And so he encouraged that. And of course, I had other great influences from the coaching side of things, not just judo, but uh, from the physical side. I had amazing advice and direction on the physical training side. And I learned so much and operated and still do operate many of the training processes up to present day. Uh, and I was really given a, a solid foundation for all of my physical preparation that um, seems to have lasted a lifetime, so far anyway. Uh, from the judo coaching side, my two main influences were Tony McConnell, whose motivational skills and tactical drive were next to none. And everybody knows that. Everybody knows how he could spur you on and bring that something different out of you. And of course, Colin McIver, whose karma approach um, helped me to assess my judo and develop it further in a different way. Uh, looking back, uh, both had big influences on me and um, became uh, dear friends of mine, of course, as well. Um, when it came to sponsorship, my first sponsor um, came a little bit later when Arnold Humphreys, um, who was a friend of Tony McConnell's, um, his company, and it was Dunn Engineering, if I remember rightly, loaned me my first ever vehicle. It was always breaking down, but it was a vehicle to get me from A to B, uh, or almost. And he paid me regular money as well. And I know that I never thanked him enough for his help. But his help made my life so much easier. And looking back, um, I realise uh, just how much help he gave, gave me and um, how, how much I appreciate it now. And, um, you know, uh, sometimes words are not enough. Uh, looking back at my competition days, I didn't realise just how important my family and friends were to the whole process all the way through. I mean, through the whole junior days, my competition days and now, of course, uh, present day. But uh, I think that when you're uh, a bit of an ass, when I was younger, I tended to think I was a bit of an ass and so into what I was doing. And it's difficult then to understand what others are doing for you and how they're helping you and sometimes it's um it can appear rude or that you don't appreciate it and uh well how does that saying go it's difficult to read the label sometimes when you're inside the bottle um but now of course totally different i mean it's a totally different thing now my responsibilities after competition uh, are so different. I have children just about to become a, a granddad as well. My best friend in the whole world, my wife, Nikki, who, whose love and support uh, and my kids as well, um, every step of the way. And I'd like to think that I help them every step of the way as well, whenever I possibly can. And it's a two way thing. It's not just all about me anymore. It's about my family and it's about my friends. And on reflection from my early days, I have so much appreciation and love for everybody that contributed to my success. Now I really appreciate what everybody has done for me because I think that um, they all helped me to get where I am today and to be the person that I am today. And I like to think that now I am a more balanced person who can help others in the future, uh, even if it's just a nudge in the right direction. But that's certainly what we're trying to do at the moment is to help as many as we possibly can.